Hi, this is Sally Morgan, physical therapist, craniosacral therapist, and Tellington T-Touch practitioner for animals and people. And this is Tristan Corgi. He's still tired from the Corgi show yesterday. And we are here with Conversations with a Corgi. I think we're at like episode 11 or 12. I haven't been keeping good track. And I have lots to post from yesterday's fun Corgi beach party. Um, there was a bikini parade and Tristan made quite an entrance in his shark costume and scared all the bathing beauties into the ring. <laughs> and many people got creative and were using scarves and bandanas to make um, speedos for their corgis. It was a really fun time and we learned a lot of new tricks and we found out a lot of new things about trick training with your dog. But today I want to focus on something that we all care about with our dogs and that is their deeper inner lives and our relationships with them. And to that end, I have two poems I've chosen to share with you from the poet Mary Oliver. As many of you might not know, I was an English teacher for 15 years or so before I became a physical therapist and a horse trainer and began my work with animals full time and became an author of my book, Dances of the Heart, Connecting with Animals. And in that, those years of teaching English, I became really fond of Mary Oliver's writing. Um, it's very deep writing, and it has helped me get through many hard times in my life. And she gave us the wonderful gift of her book called Dog Songs, which are poems about dogs. And she is a dog lover. This book came out in 2013, so it's still a little bit new. And a lot of people don't know about this book. And I really recommend it highly. It's called Dog Songs by Mary Oliver. Mary Oliver also holds a place in my heart because she resides on Cape Cod, where I like to spend really a lot of time in the summer at the beach with my dog, meeting other dogs, exploring the seashore, and relaxing, and just seeing the beauty of nature that you can only find at the seaside. And I think a lot of the environment of the sea uh, informs Mary Oliver's poems, even if not specifically, indirectly. There's that sense of the tides coming and going, of the perpetual motion of our life and death cycles here on the earth. And I really am so fortunate to have learned about her writing earlier in my life, and so fortunate that she wrote this book called Dog Songs. It's a wonderful present to give to someone you know if they really love dogs. The first poem I want to share with you is called Luke's Junkyard Song. I was born in a junkyard, not even on a bundle of rags or the seat of an old wrecked car, but in the dust below. But when I opened my eyes, I could crawl to the edge and see the moving grass and the trees, and this I began to dream on, though the worms were eating me. And at night, through the twists of metal, I could see a single star, one, not even two. Its light was a thing of wonder, and I learned something precious that would also be good for you. Though the worms kept biting and pinching, I fell in love with this star. I stared at it every night, that light so clear and far. Listen. A junkyard puppy learns quickly how to dream. Listen, whatever you see and love, that's where you are. And this poem is important to me because when I was with the Upledger Institute with Dr. Upledger, an animal communicator, Mary Getton, uh, in the Bahamas doing some craniosacral um, swimming with dolphins and being with dolphins, I had the experience of working with a young male dolphin named Abaco, and these dolphins are not really kept in any sort of an aquarium or something. They are able to go out and swim in the ocean free every day behind some boats, and then they come back. But it's not the life of a free dolphin, but it's still better than you know dolphins that are really kept in captivity at aquariums and things. But I was floating in the water with Abaco around me. He was a young dolphin uh, male, I think maybe two or something. And I just had this vision of him, really a kind of a sadness coming from him. 
And as I was floating on my back, and I'm a terrible swimmer, so it was a miracle, it was a dolphin miracle that I could even float on my back, looking up at the sky and the clouds, I thought, well, you can see infinitely in the sky here. And I communicated that to Abaco. I said, but we're all free when we can see the sky. The sky goes on forever. Look at these clouds. The, the clouds are like the sea for you when you're in the enclosure here. And I felt this kind of relief come from him and through me. And we were just really connected for 40 minutes, dreaming of swimming in the sky, being free in the sky, and not really feeling the confines of our bodies, let alone the uh, enclosure he was in, which was really large and really comfortable. And later I learned that Abaco had some kind of a disease and he didn't live many years longer. But I had a really profound experience with him in connecting with animals and getting a sense of what Mary Oliver describes in this poem that there is the greater universe beyond any of our current pain and suffering and that that connects us all and gives us a freedom of anything that is in our life that is unpleasant or uncomfortable or even life-threatening. And I've had that experience of connecting to a greater sense many times in my life. I had a near-death experience and um, felt like I was the tree that surrounded me when I was falling from this horse and having a serious head injury and I could feel my mother hearing on the phone that I was injured or dead and I, the pain just washed through my body and I felt connected to people I had known in my life and I felt connected to people that I didn't know that were waiting for me um, kind of on the other side of the light and people who were waiting for me to come back here and it's a profound sense of connection and many many people that have had a near-death experience have a very similar report of feeling this deep interconnectedness of all things. And in feeling that, it's a sense of great peace. And so you're not afraid of dying. You're not afraid of moving on. And in a way, that has given me comfort you know, throughout my life. And I remember Bernie Siegel, um, who runs great cancer survivor, thriver support groups in Connecticut, asking us one day, what are you really afraid of? And many people in the group were afraid of dying, afraid of cancer, afraid of medical treatments. And he said that the best answer he ever received was from an elderly woman who said, I am afraid of driving on the freeway at night. And they live by 95 in Connecticut where there are many big accidents at night. And Bernie felt like that was a legitimate thing to be afraid of. But a fear of dying which many of us have, is not necessarily um, a terrible thing. Dying can be a beautiful, peaceful thing. And I've done a lot of work with hospice, with people and animals, and I have not encountered what I would call great suffering in moments of death if you are able to um, keep pain away and maintain a spiritual place for that animal or person who is passing. So it's really important, I think, in our lives with animals and with other people to remember our connection to the greater things around us and to the universe and to each other because we all really are one thing. A man named um, Larry Dossie has even written a book about this. It's a great book. And it talks about um, the connectedness between all beings and um, the oneness of the universe. And that's a really, really important thing to keep in mind when you are losing your patience with your dog or with your horse or with your family members, that we are all the same being, really. We are all like the cells in our body that make us up is part of, we're all like those cells making up the giant organism that is the universe around us, the living things, the trees, the plants. And there's even been research that the trees are interconnected to each other even when they're in different species. That's a book called The Secret Life of Trees. It's a really brilliant new book. So I would like to remind you that you are connected with your dog. And if you're feeling impatient and yelling at your dog, take a minute, do a heart hug. Just take a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And come back to what you love about your dog 
and what is going on with you that's causing you to lose patience. Usually it's something about you, not about the dog. The dog is trying to just do what you want him to do, and sometimes you're not asking him in a way that he can understand. I have a second poem I'd like to talk about today as well because it's more optimistic and it gets more to the point of what I've been speaking about from that poem with the puppy dreaming at the star. This one is called Every Dog's Story. I have a bed, my very own. It's just my size. And sometimes I like to sleep alone with dreams inside my eyes. But sometimes dreams are dark and wild and creepy, and I wake and I'm afraid, though I don't know why. But I'm no longer sleepy, and too slowly the hours go by. So I climb on the bed where the light of the moon is shining in your face, and I know it will be morning soon. Everybody needs a safe place. And for those of us who have taken that leap to allow our dogs to stay on our bed with us or who have pulled them off of their bed or the floor in the middle of the night to snuggle with them. There is no greater comfort, um, I think, in your experience with your dog than taking a nap with your dog next to you in the grass on a summer day or in your bed or snuggled under blankets on a cold winter day like it is here. It's eight degrees with a terrible wind chill a tree is still down in my yard, completely smashing into my fence for my dog. But we'll get that taken care of. And so right now, even, just being close to Tristan and snuggling with him is really a place of comfort. And we find this with our animals. And as the same way that we can take comfort in the greater universe around us and the beauty of the sky, no matter what the weather, there is always some beauty in the sky that we can appreciate you know, the darkness of the clouds, the power of nature, even in a bad situation. And, of course, on a beautiful sunny day like it is today, you have much to appreciate when you look up at the sky and the trees and the vastness of the world around you and find that place of comfort with your dog inside where it's warm <laughs> or outside in a beautiful setting if it's lovely outside. And so I'd like to take... Um, this opportunity and those two poems to remind you of our connection with our animals, to nature, to the world around us, and to each other, and to appreciate our animals today for all of the gifts they give us. And I feel as if, and I think many other people do, that there just isn't enough in the world that I can give this little dog for what he gives back to me. He is, as everyone's dog is, so precious and so wonderful to share life with us. And we are so lucky to be with our pets and our horses and our dogs. And I had many lucky years when my horse was chewing grass in my backyard with my rabbits hopping around under him and Winnie Corgi, my first dog, uh, keeping charge of the whole situation the way only a Corgi can do. But it was a wonderful thing to be uh, free with my animals in an environment where they were all happy and peaceful and so was I. A really special opportunity. So if you have that chance in your life to be with all of your animals in one place, it is really um, a wonderful gift to be able to share some time with them and to be in a peaceful place with them. I hope everyone has a wonderful day appreciating the animals in their lives and the animals that you've known in the past. I'm wearing my comet pin today, which someone painted to look like him, because at the fun Corgi Beach party yesterday, there was indeed a dog who looked like Comet and felt like Comet, and uh, the owner was very nice to let me spend a lot of time with Daisy, um, appreciating her and feeling close to Comet. So, you know, even if your animal is no longer with you, or even if you have an animal now like I do, Tristan, it's always nice to take a little time and remember that animal and all the many gifts they gave you. So we'll close today with another heart hug to appreciate the animal in your life. Take a breath in, start at the six, making a circle and a quarter all the way back to the nine. And just send love and appreciation and respect to the animals in your life. And you can do a heart hug on your animal if you'd like, if you can reach him. 
can barely see Tristan down here. He's very tired. So another reminder, my website is down until April. So I'm also not getting emails through my website. So please email me at sallymorganpt at gmail.com. And you can always communicate with me on my Facebook page, Sally Morgan PT CST, and also craniosacral therapy for animals. It's been a pleasure spending time with you this morning, and I hope you have some special time with your pets today. And check out Mary Oliver's book, Dog Songs. Thank you.